which is actually just a really wide, very slow moving river. Um, but you're in there for three days. And then after that, up on the panhandle, there's another swamp. So we, we go, and let me tell you, you are walking in water up to your knees, sometimes up to your waist. Um, there's holes under the water, so you're using your trekking poles to go like this to make sure there's no hole. You can only go about one mile an hour. Yeah, there's plenty of water, and you have water filters that you use to filter the water. Um, but then when you want to sleep at night, you have to go to what's called a hammock. And that's where the ground raises up just a little bit, you know, out of the water so it's dry, where all the critters want to go and hang out. So you had to go there with your pole and move the snakes out of the way and everything set up, and that's where you were set up. And so for the three days, you had to do that three nights. So you spent three days walking. And I know when I was getting ready to get out of it, I needed water. But the, you can see the tower by um, Alligator Alley. And I know it's a rest area, and I know they have ice cream there. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I can make it. I don't need to get water. I, I can make it, you know. And so I'm walking, and I'm walking. And there's a thing in hiking when you're hiking mountains called a false summit. When you're hiking, you think you're at the top. And you get there, and you realize, holy crap, no, it still goes a lot more, you know. <laughs> well, but getting out of the Everglades has a false summit also. Because they tell you, you'll be coming out, and you'll get on a road, and then you'll walk out. And so finally, we get to this road, and now we're separated. Not pretty much now by myself. There's another girl up maybe half a mile ahead of me, a couple people behind me. Um, but it kicked our butts, so we, although we were hiking a bunch together in the beginning, it spread out because everybody was just dying doing this. And so I get to this road, and I'm like, finally, thank God, I'm out of the water. And I walk like 75 yards and back into the water. Oh. That wasn't the road. I mean, that was heartbreaking at that point. Now still, I'm out of water, I need water. Anybody see the Chevy Chase movie, Vacation? That movie? Remember when he crashed the car in the desert? And he went for help and met his wife and his kids at the gas station. And he comes into the gas station talking like this, good he can't even talk. That's how I was when I got out of the Everglades. I come walking out of there. And they're handing me bottles of water, bottles of water and everything. And I'm like, I get it. I get it now. You know, I'll say this is fun. It's a private club, OK? I get it. I'll tell everybody how much fun it was. You know, I'm in the club now. I get it. Right. So there's a guy, Nimble Will Nomad, who's hiked all around the entire country. First one to hike from Cape May up to Nova Scotia. Uh, he just finished walking from Chicago to um, LA on Route 66. Finally, he's about 80 years old. He said, I think I'm done with my walking. I think I'm done now. But he was there. And so I take my shoes off. And in that book over there, you can see the pictures of my feet, which were atrocious. And he looked at my feet with all the hiking he's done, and he said, I've never seen feet like that in my life. And I'm like, OK, well, I'm going, I'm going over for ice cream. It's about 150 yards away. He's like, no, i got to clean your feet first. I'm like, no, I need to get ice cream first. <laughs> and he's arguing back and forth. So everybody has trail names, right? So right in front of all the other hikers, he goes, don't be a bonehead. Well, there goes. That's it. They all start laughing, and now they're calling me bonehead. Right? <laughs> and you walk in along after that and, and see in the sand, bonehead, bonehead, <laughs> you know, on Facebook. Hey, bonehead did this, right? So we're walking along that big circle in Florida, the big lake, Obi Chucky, whatever it's called. And um, there was a, a restaurant, really funny, because there was a, a whole big family of pigs totally wiped out by like a semi lane all over the road. When we got to the restaurant, Wild Boar was on the menu. Coincidence? Uh, I don't know. But anyway, we get there, and I said to everybody, if I pay for dinner, can I buy you guys off and we don't use the bonehead anymore? <laughs> and they're like, absolutely. You can, you know, buy it. You can be, we can be bought, you know. <laughs> so I paid for dinner for everybody. And then, um, so after that, there was no more po post calling me bonehead. But they'd say, boy, I get a bonehead move today. But I still see in the sand, hello, bonehead, you know. But they kept it up on Facebook pretty much, so that was pretty good. Um, but every day, we thought we were going to get out of the water because we were told three days in the swamp and then up on the panhandle. Well, we were lied to. It was the wettest year they've ever had. And every single day, we walked in water for over 600 miles. 
and every day, and, you know, the elevation only changes a few inches, but you can tell when you're coming into water just by the flora, and you'll go, oh my God, here we go again, and then you're back into water, and you can always tell, as soon as your feet dried, you were going back into water, you know. So we were in the water every day, and we're all thinking, this is the day we're going to be out of water, and it wasn't. So, it got on people's nerves, and there were a lot of people following us on Facebook for one reason, the hike for mental health, you know, and so they're all following us. Well, now they're playing bets who's going to beat the hell out of who on the trail, because <laughs> we're all getting really grumpy and nasty with each other, and we're all just really unhappy. So finally, we get up to, um, it's about 600, 650 miles, close to 700 miles, and my feet finally didn't hurt excruciating anymore. It was finally, okay, I'm not walking constant in pain. Um, again, if you look at the pictures of my feet, it was like brutal. I mean, it was unreal. Everybody in Facebook was like, that's going to take you up the trail. I'm like, no, it's not. I'll walk through the pain. And a lot of people follow me who couldn't hike. And there's a lot of people who do that, they hike through you. So I just couldn't let all these people down and just say, you know, I'm throwing in the towel. Although there were times when I really wanted to, you know. Um, so then my feet started toughening up and I was hiking with about four other guys and a woman. And we're, you know, when you're hiking, you all share a room together. You know, you, everybody hops into bed together. It doesn't matter, you just share rooms. It's cheaper that way. And next, that night, these two guys are going, well, if we walk up this road and then take a, take a right and go up another five uh, miles, we only walk 15 miles, but we get 28 trail miles. So I'm like, what? And they're like, we have 28 trail miles. So I said, how do you figure? Well, because we get on a trail right there, and that's 28 miles from here. I'm like, you get no trail miles. You get zero trail miles, you're not on the trail. <laughs> you know, it's like, what are you talking about? You know? So I said, if you take the interstate, it's only 700 miles instead of 1,100. You know? Just take the interstate, walk up the interstate. You know? So at that point, I decided that it's time for me to leave that group. You know? <laughs> so as we're going, and we get to the point where they're going to, you call that blue blazing, is what you call it. Uh, so when they're going to start blue blazing, the um, Florida Trail goes off to the right, and they're walking down this nice dirt kind of road, you know, and then I look to the right, and there is nothing, nothing but miserable swamp right there. And I'm looking at them going, I've been walking in water for like weeks and weeks. It's only water, and so I'm now going to, I really hate this phrase, but it works perfect for this, I'm going to embrace the suck, you know. <laughs> and so I left those guys, and I go walking in this water, you know, and then you're in and out of water, in and out of water. I won a photography contest. I got first and third place with my pictures of all this water. Um, and so all of a sudden I come up and I see Irish Charm, uh, who was with one of the other guys, with that other group. And I was like, so where are they? They're like way up ahead? He goes, are you kidding? They didn't get, get here yet. I said, what are you talking? They didn't get here yet. It's 28 miles I walked, you know. They have only got walking 15. He goes, yeah, they got lost. You know? <laughs> so at that point, I continued, and I went on the trail by myself. I just finished it pretty much by myself. Um, one of the jokes on the Florida Trail was, what's the rarest thing you ever see on the Florida Trail? It's another hiker, you know. And you can go literally days and days without seeing hikers, you know. Um, so then I'm having one of those great days where you just cranking along, you're going about four miles an hour, everything's really good. There's all cypress trees and they're going this way down and you're not in the water and I'm just boogieing and right along feeling great and instantly a cypress tree didn't like that and grabbed my foot and I, boom, right out. My Gatorade bottle shot out like cannons. I must have been out for a while because I woke up, there was all dirt in my mouth. My right tooth was twisted in my socket. Um, I had a fracture right down here. Uh, I didn't know that for another couple of months that it was actually fractured. Um, so my, I went from having this like great day to a really crappy day, you know. So you get to the St. Mark's River. Now you're up on the Panhandle now, which is beautiful, probably one of the prettiest parts of the trail. And you have to, you can't ford the St. Mark's, it's too big. So you have to like wait till a boat goes by and go, hello, hello, can you give me a ride over, you know. And so you want to get there on a weekend when it's busier. Of course, I got there on a Tuesday. 
There's a little tiki bar over there, and there's people I'm like, if you come get me, I'll have lunch. Come on, please. You know. So I called a bed and breakfast, because I was going to take a couple of days off, because I was really hurt. And he goes, All right, give it another half an hour. If nobody comes by, I'll come pick you up. I'm like, okay. So I call, and nobody's come. So he comes to pick me up. I'm standing in the water up to like my ankles or so. And he comes on a jet ski. Now I have my pack with me, my trekking poles. And he pulls up on his jet ski, and the first thing he says to me is, oh my god, you're standing in the water. <laughs> I'm like, hello, I've been standing in the water for months here, you know. So he hands me one of those orange life jackets that I have to put on, and he goes, we just put it around your neck, we're not going that far. <laughs> so now I'm immediately unsnapping all my belts on my pack, because all I see me is on the back, off the back of the jet ski, on the bottom of the water, looking at the light, trying to get my pack off to get up there, you know. So. He was a really good guy. I, um, I did what they call a slack pack at that point. And that was where you leave your pack, and he, I would hike for like 10 miles, call him, he'd come pick me up. The next day, he'd bring me back that 10 miles, and I'd hike another 10 miles. Because um, I was trying to get you know this to feel better. I couldn't eat because of my tooth. And I'm figuring, you know, how does it really work twisting a tooth back? You know, luckily, it took OK. You know. Um, so anyway, continuing on, it was um, after I left those people, that's when I really started to enjoy the trail. Um, there wasn't all the bickering and all the BS that was going on. It was really you know, fun at that point. Um, I got to see a lot more wildlife and everything. It was really good. Um, then I got to uh, Pensacola, and I ran into Nibble Will Nomad. He had been following us up all along. And every now and then you'd see Nibbles truck there, and he's got Coca-Cola, cupcakes and stuff, and it was pretty nice. It was a nice little support to have as we were going up. So he sees me, and he goes, you know, you're way ahead of everybody. I'm like, by, by how far? He goes, probably by two to three days. And oh. he goes, would you mind waiting so you can all finish together? And I'm sitting there going, yeah, I'm waiting in a motel <laughs> that has a bar. <laughs> And so I went and checked into this little motel that had a bar and uh, hung out there for two to three days. I guess it was, I hung out there for two days and then I hiked down to the end to the, um, the campground where I thought we had like a mile to go, you know. And so everybody started showing up, you know. And so we all um, hung out that night, had some beers and stuff and woke up in the morning and it was really weird. Usually you wake up in the morning and you know the first sound you hear is one zipper and another zipper. So it's a great alarm clock. You know the zippers start opening up. You know uh, then you hear um, your air pads deflating. You know um, so but that morning everybody got up and nobody talked. Everybody just went around their business, packing it up. You know nobody was talking really to anybody. You know um, we all got our packs on. I just started walking. And we started walking. Uh, after about a few hundred yards, Nibble stopped and recited a beautiful poem. I don't know the name of the poem, um, but I'm pretty sure it's in that book. If you click that thing, you can see it. Um, but it was this really pretty, really nice poem. And then we're walking along. And there's a monument at the southern terminus of the Florida Trail. There is one now at the northern terminus, but in 2015, there wasn't. All there was was a kiosk. Um, A kiosk, um, which just explains what's going on. And the blazes you follow are orange blazes. So all of a sudden we're walking along and I see this guy in a bio and he's got a camera and I see this kiosk and all of a sudden I was like, oh shit, we're done. We're done. We're here. So I don't know if you can see that's my summit picture. I'll bring it over on that side. But that's it, just kissing a, a piece of wood. <laughs> well, everybody else on the Appalachian Trail, you have to kiss the big sign, take pictures of the sign. No, I'm kissing just a piece of wood. Um, it was pretty emotional. In fact, this is the first talk that I did where um, I do a talk every year at what's called the Alder Gathering. Um, and I do a workshop on hiking the Florida Trail. And usually when I get to this point, you know, I start like tearing up. It's the first time I really didn't. So. A little bit, but not much, you know. Um, but um, on my last workshop, 
you know, because I explain to people, there's two workshops that there. One is the fluffy workshop that this one woman does and shows all the wonderful, beautiful things about it, you know. And then there's mine, you know. And I tell people, I'm going to tell you the truth about it, you know. So before my workshop, we did a uh, panel discussion. And so the girl, um, Rainbow, next to me goes, tone it down a little bit about the water, Tom. You know? <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not going to tone it down about the water. You know, it was a major part of the, the hike. I'm not toning it down at all. So the first group, so how was it? Oh, it was wonderful. Um, it was dry. The Everglades was dry. Next guy, oh, it was dry. It was wonderful. You know, you know what I mean? What about you, Tom? I get up, I pick up my phone. I'm going to tell you people. It was like wet. It was like water everywhere, you know? So, um, then they were like, um, so what about the roadwalks? Because there's 300 miles of roadwalks on the Florida Trail, and roadwalks are not fun. They're really hard on your feet, your hips, everything, right? So the first couple is like, oh, they were fine. You know, you just walk on them, and that's it. And the next guy next to me, um, who are good friends, I just can't think of, Chuck Norris is his uh, trailman. And Chuck's <laughs> like, um, oh, no, it wasn't bad. It's only 300 miles of roadwalk. They're like, what about you, Tom? I was like, they were dry, they were dry, <laughs> so that was good, you know. Um, but the Florida Trail is a unique trail, it's the most difficult trail I've ever done in my life. I mean, it's uh, literally, um, I don't know if you, you know what trekking poles are, um, most of you I'm sure do, but these are trekking poles. If you use them properly when you're doing normal hiking, the point should never be in front of your feet. It should be going like this, okay? Unless you go downhill, then they should be. And the idea is you can get half a mile an hour um, more speed by using trekking poles properly. Problem is most people don't know how, they just use them like this, they don't know how, you're supposed to be pushing yourself along. And that takes a lot of the uh, work off your lower body and brings it to your upper body. And so you get a little bit more speed out of it and it's easier on your body, you know. Um, Pack-wise, these are three of my packs. Um, some of you may have read, probably not, but may have read the paper last year. Um, a year ago this past February, I hiked from Houston to Austin via San Antonio. Um, I had people on Facebook from all over the country send me 800 postcards that said, let's eliminate the stigma of mental illness. So I didn't want to use my ultralight. I didn't, I didn't have that day pack at the time. So I decided to use this thing. This thing is heavy. But it's really kind of padded and comfortable. And I knew I wasn't going to be carrying a lot of weight on it. So if it wasn't going to have a lot of weight on it, it was going to be pretty comfortable. Of course, whenever you're hiking, things break all the time. So you have to have needle and thread and be able to repair your stuff as you move along. So I hiked, um, you, know, uh, you know that Highway 90? It parallels 10. Mm -hmm. So you're walking um, eight feet from semis going 80 miles an hour um, all day long. And the problem with Texas is the road is really straight and really flat. So you're walking for like two hours and you don't even think you got anywhere because you're looking at the exact same thing in front of you hour after hour. And the other funny thing is when you hike next to a road like that, um, your skin, because stuff blowing up on it, it gets, at the end of the day, it's kind of like you have, um, um, you're peeling like you've had sunburn, and you kind of go like this and you're peeling the layer of whatever it is off your body. You know, it's kind of really strange. Um, I was sleeping under bridges. You know, um, I got to Gonzales and um, I'm in a park. It was like 95 degrees. I'm talking to my partner Leo. I'm really not happy. Um, I'm, I'm going to sleep under this bridge. Cops said they keep an eye on me. No place to get something to eat or even drink around there. So I said, all right, Leo, I'm going to go. I'm going to go set up my tent. And so it was one of the real low times. And um, so when I um, go to start walking to do it, this old white jockey of a car comes up. And there's a woman yelling at me, hello, hello. Are you the guy going to um, Austin? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, I'm the reporter. Can I interview you? I was like, OK. So she comes out and hands me this really big thing of ice water. It was wonderful. I was like slugging that down. And we're sitting there talking. And she goes, where are you, where are you staying tonight? I said, underneath this bridge over here. And she's like, what? I said, I've been sleeping under bridges a lot. And 
coyote tracks are freaking me out down there. Um, I said, so I'm, I'm going to be down there, you know. So she gets on the phone and she goes, come with me. It takes me to one of the nicest hotels in Gonzales, and the manager there put me up for the night. And it was really nice. I did the interview in the lobby, which was air conditioned and nice. And, um, and then that night I went, um, I said, where's a good place to eat? And I'm like, the grill over on the other side of the square is pretty good. So I go over there and I order food, and maybe two, maybe three beers, you know. And I go to pay, and they're like, you're the guy going to Austin, right? And I'm like, yeah, they're like, it's on us, don't worry about it. I was like, wow. Um, so then after that, I meet a woman, actually before that, um, kind of like the town before you get to where the Shiner Brewery is. I can't remember the name of the towns right now. Um, but this black SUV pulls and stops like a half a mile up. And I'm a Yankee walking in Texas, you know, and I just couldn't help but to look down at my chest and go, is there going to be a bullet ripping through my chest right now? <laughs> I mean, you know, really, you know, and just stopped there. Then they turned and crossed over and then turned back, and I'm getting closer and closer. And a woman rolls out the window and she goes, I'm on the phone with my girlfriend. I'm like, okay. And she goes, what are you doing? And I turned around and laid a flyer laminated on my back and let her read it. She goes, are you kidding? I'm like, no. And she goes, it's two miles into town. It's going to start pouring any minute. I'm like, I know. And she's like, if you promise not to hurt me, I'll give you a ride in. <laughs> I'm on the phone with my girlfriend. I'm like, OK, I get that. And that's a good thing. I'm like, but if I was going to hurt you, I'd probably lie and tell you I wasn't going to hurt you. <laughs> and she's like, I don't think you're going to hurt me. I'm like, I'm not going to hurt you. So she brought me into that town and went in and paid for my motel. You know, So I met really nice people on that trip. It was really uh, just a good trip. And so then when I get to Austin, I'm there about 10 days early. And um, so when I'm there, I'm staying in a hostel. Now, I'm used to staying at hiker hostels, you know. Well, this is a hostel in a city right by a college. So it's like drug dealers and stuff like that hanging out there. And it's like really not a really pleasant experience. <laughs> but I wanted to start on a Wednesday, and I wanted to end at the governor's office on a Wednesday because Wednesday is the day most people take their life. So I just, it was a symbolic thing for me. So I had to wait like about a week, you know, to get there. But when I got there, there was reporters um, that met me at the hostel and took pictures of me at the hostel. And people came up, about seven people came up from um, Houston to walk the last mile with me. And there was a photographer, so I had like this little paparazzi thing going on as I'm walking the last mile. And we get to the governor's office. I knew I was not gonna be able to see the governor because they were in session, but I got to his secretary and she was like blown away. She was like, you walk here? I'm like, yeah, via San Antonio, not the short way either. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and uh, she was like, wow, you know, why? You know, and I said, well, I have some postcards that I want to give the governor. And I had like about 10 of them in my hand and I, I just want to make sure he gets them. And she goes, okay, yeah, no, I'll definitely give them to him. I'm like, okay, can I put them on your desk? And she's like, yeah. I start moving stuff around on a desk. I take my pack off, open it up, and I dump 800 postcards on the desk. <laughs> 800 postcards to me doesn't sound like a lot of postcards. It's a real lot of postcards, you know. Um, I didn't carry them the whole way because once I, once I put them in the pack, I was like, oh, no, this is not going to happen. <laughs> so I carried 10 of them, and then I, um, um, Leo met me there, and he had them in a bag, and I took them, I dumped them into my pack. He goes, you don't want to give them to him in a bag? I was like, they didn't come in a bag. No, I want to pour them on the desk, you know. Um, so that was last uh, February. And uh, it was a fun thing to do, but I would never, ever do it again. And I would never recommend it to anybody. Uh, there was a guy walking on 90 back in Alabama that about two weeks before I was starting my walk. And he got taken out by a woman driver. Um, and he was walking um, to bring awareness to um, environmental issues, you know, he was walking barefoot. And um. He was killed like two weeks before I was going to do this, you know. Um, so um, it's not, it's a dangerous thing and definitely not recommend it at all. And, you know, in Texas, for a Yankee just to like go on somebody's property and crash there for the night, not, not a good thing, you know. Um, so, um, but that was my trip there. Um, I go every year. Right now, um, on the 14th, I leave for Pennsylvania. I house sit for a friend of mine. Her and her husband are what's called triple crowners. 
So that means that they have um, hiked the Appalachian Trail, the Pacific Crest Trail, and the Continental Divide Trail. Um, so it's a pretty big honor for somebody to do that. And so I house sit for the, them, and her husband is a world-class chainsaw carver. So last time I did it, I got a beautiful barred owl. When I posted it on Facebook, people were like, is that real? I was like, no, it's wood, believe it or not. Um, so I get a piece of their art. I don't let them pay me, I just take a piece of their art. But the good thing is, they're only six miles from the Appalachian Trail. So as soon as I get up, I feed the goats, I feed the cats. I go down to the pavilion and hang out with hikers all day long. They make beer runs for them and stuff. Um, I only have a smart car, so I can't shuttle them really to the store and stuff. Um, but I can run to the store for them and things like that. And, um, so I get to hang out for six weeks with the hikers again. So they, a lot of them will see me in Hiawassee. You know, a lot of them will see me at Trail Days, which is mile 454 when I was there. And then a lot of them are going to see me in Pennsylvania. Um, at Trail Days, when I was in Hiawassee, I had to tell everybody, come to the booth for Hike for Mental Health and tell them Tom said to give you the address. We do a wine and cheese party. And so I invited every one of the hikers, knowing that half of them will not make it there. That's the point halfway people have dropped out. But we had probably about 70 hikers show up. And not only I was there, another um, girl who worked at the hostel was there, and another guy who was working at the hostel. So it was kind of like a reunion. We're all seeing each other again, you know, and it was pretty, pretty cool. So um, then now I'm off to um, Pennsylvania to get out of this heat, you know. And the other thing is um, leave no trace, and that's a big thing. Um, you don't want to leave a trace. When you camp and you leave, you want everything to be gone. Um, another thing, what I want to show you too, is this is my ultralight pack. This pack here is only 14 ounces when it's empty. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing hundreds of miles, it looks like a garbage bag, I know. Um, but what I'm going to be doing like hundreds of miles hike, this is the one I use. Um, it needs repair. Um, at trail days I talked to the manufacturer and they're like, you know, for 1,700 miles it actually looks pretty good. And I'm like, can it be repaired? They're like, yeah, this is definitely can be repaired. So I'm going to send it to them and get it repaired um, so I can continue using it. But a pack like this was only about $350, somewhere around there. Um, this pack here is, if I'm going to just go out for a day, or maybe one overnighter or something like that, then I'll use this pack. It's, um, you can fit everything in it. It works good. Um, uh, but I wouldn't use it for a through hike. And to me, it's too heavy. Um, but for one or two days, that's what I use for this. What kind of, what is the this is... Oscar. Did you say how much that one was? Uh, this one here, my cousins, when I went to visit them and we went hiking, kept giving me a hard time about my garbage van pack. And they own Gearheads in Moab, um, Utah, which is like a really very big, famous gear shop. And after I got back, I got this in the mail, and there was over $500 worth of gear in it. Oh. And I was like, oh, wow, OK. So I guess it's for, you know, um, our hikers for hiking mental health, whoever raises the most money, they're like, well, you can do that if you want, but it's really for you. I'm like, okay, fine, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> so I got $500 again. So a, a pack like this is probably about $180 for something like this, you know. Uh, this one here was a, a Cabela's. I just bought it online. I think I paid like $80, $90 for it. Um, you also want to, uh, how are we doing on time here? 7.40, 7.45. Oh, okay. Um, you know, when you're hiking, you have a bladder, um, and the bladder fits in your pack, and this comes out through the side of your pack, so you can hydrate while you're walking. Um, what I did on mine, I can't find it right now. I have all my hiking stuff all over the place. But there's a Sawyer filter so you cut, just cut this and you put the Sawyer filter in, and then you can go just to any water at all, scoop it up, put it through, and then you're drinking clean water because it siphons right through it. Um, another way people uh, siphon is this thing here, which I can go down to any puddle at all and um, just drink any water out of any puddle, just like that. Take the cap off first, and then drink any water. and be, you know, amazed at some of the disgusting water you can drink when you filter it like that. Um, 
Your stoves are really <coughs> tiny. Um, I would never use a gas canister like this on a through hub. They make a small one, I would use a small one. Um, but this is what you would use um, for when you're cooking. I don't cook anymore, because when I'm done hiking, I'm so tired that all I want to do is go to bed. Um, so I snack on things all day long as I'm walking. And when I get there, I snack, and, and that's it. And my pack, when I have water and three days worth of food in it, is about 18 pounds, um, which is really nice. Um, kind of pisses people off when we're taking a break and I don't even take my pack off. You know, just hanging out while they're taking their packs off. That was another thing in the other place, when you wanted to stop and rest, you just had to stop and rest like this. There's no place to put your pack. It's all water everywhere, you know. Um, you have the snakes, you have four venomous snakes you got to be watching out for. Water moccasins are nasty, they'll just go after you for the hell of it, you know. Um, it was, uh, and the bugs, oh my god, the bugs were like unbelievable. If was, you had to put your fingers up like that when the sun was two inches from the horizon, you better be in your tent because they're coming out. And you get in that tent and you just hear them because they sense your carbon dioxide. So they're buzzing all around the outside. It's like amazing. And they're buzzing and you know they're thinking, come on out, you know you gotta pee. Like, I got Gatorade bottles, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> And the other thing is, you know those big airboats, you know? So I'm walking along that big lake, OB, whatever it's called, and I'm standing there, and I hear a guy out there yelling, and he, it's like he's yelling for his dog, and so the next thing you know, the airboat just comes right out of the water, right up onto the levee, right at me. I'm like, these things could go on land? He goes, I can drive this right up Main Street if I want, you know? And he goes, you want a beer? I was like, Sure. And he gives me a beer. We talk for a little bit. He goes, I can't feel my dog. My dog jumped over. He goes, I go home without my dog. My wife's going to kill me. I'm like, your dog is probably alligator poop by right now, you know? Yeah. So I gave him the empty can back, and he went back looking for his dog. Ten minutes later, another one comes popping out. This guy's got a dog on it, so I'm thinking it's him saying he found his dog. But it wasn't. It was a completely different guy. So he stops. He goes, you want a beer? I was like... Okay, does this happen all the time around here? <laughs> you know? And so then I talked to him, and th so then I set up my um, tent. And what I didn't realize is from the lake over the levee and down is a canal, and there's a little ramp that comes up and down, and that's what they use. And I set my tent up right on the top of that. And next thing I'm hearing these things coming at me, and I'm like, I'm zipping, waving the light out, going, hello, hello, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. I had to get up and move my tent at that point, you know. But there were a lot of good, funny stories. Uh, we we um, aquablazed the Suwannee River. Now, aquablazing means you rent canoes, and instead of walking the trail that's right along the river, you you know, you paddle it. Um, purists don't agree with it, you know. Um, but we thought it would be kind of fun. You know, how bad can it be? You're going with the current. Yeah, with a 10 to 15 mile wind coming at you constantly, it was the worst time. We had we had all the boats tied together because we were afraid it would tip in because it was so cold out and the water was so cold. Everybody has to pee at a different time because everybody's drinking beer. Nobody can sync this up at all, you know. So as you're constantly pulling over, constantly pulling over, um, that was probably the worst three days of the whole trail. And that was the, that was the night we're all in the hotel and that's when they're going to start blue blazing and I'm like, okay, I'm going out by myself. I had had it after that um, aqua blazing thing. Anybody have any questions? Um, yeah, yeah, I have one. Yep. If you were going to start something here, like if you wanted to start doing this and you wanted to start trying to, you know, get get into it, is what other places around here, what kind of area around here that you can start working it's at? Tom? Not a real heck of a lot. Not right very here. many places. I, I notice. Um, well, you know, you guys have um, the Lone Star Trail. There's a book yeah, over here. Curious. I know, yeah. was just curious about yeah. the ones that are available there's, around there's here. There's a Lone Star Trail, which is about an hour. Thank you. There's a Lone Star Trail, which is about an hour. It's only about 110 miles. And from what I understand, it's like a mini Florida trail. So prepare to be wet. And um, instead of three, because it's only 109 miles, instead of 300 miles of road walk, you only have 30 miles of road walk. Um, but it's like wet, and everybody tells me it's like a mini Florida trail. So I really would like to do it, but after doing the Florida trail, <laughs> you know, but it's only, you know, you can do this in a week, you know, 
Um, yeah, that's what I was fixing to ask you too. What kind but, of time? Yeah, right around here, there, there's not a real lot. You yeah. know, uh, especially the summer, who wants to be hiking in this oh, yeah. weather here? Um, out west, Big Bend area, oh my god, it's beautiful hiking out there. Um, I also notice when I'm going out I-10, because I drive course country three, four times a year, I notice this, this recreation area out near, um, what's the town that starts with a B? Bamaray. What is it? Bamaray? No. Um, Ernie Castro? No. It's like, um, it's got the Gator Park, the Alligator Park right there. Yes. Oh, I-10. Oh, what is it? about Beaumont? Hold on, thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just here, uh, um, I drop by there every day. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm just sitting here thinking what you're talking about as far as the trail. But yeah. Okay. On my way out there, I see a recreation area, and it looks like you can hike there. There's also places in Louisiana <coughs> you can hike, but again, Louisiana, you got to watch out for the alligators. You, know, you got to know what time of year. Um, when you're hiking near alligators, you know, the rule of thumb is in Louisiana and Florida, if there's water, there's alligators. So you don't go by the water at dusk or dawn because although they don't <coughs> look at you as food, um, they can't tell if you're a deer or not when it's dark like that. You know, yeah. most times when an alligator looks at you, he wants to get away because we look like a giant monster to him. You know, uh, so most times. But when you're in their ele element, there was one time I was all by myself. I had to go um, probably from here to the end of the park a lot over in the corner there through water up to here. Um, and you try to go as fast as you can, but without with disturbing the water as least you can, you know? So you're like, go baby step like this. And as soon as I got to the other side and I climbed up the bank, the old gator just jumped right in the water right there. So um, the whole time you're thinking, I've never heard of anybody been eaten by an alligator hiking the Florida Trail. So that's a little comforting, but you know, you could be the first, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing, anytime you're hiking, you definitely want to leave no trees. The Appalachian Trail right now is just ridiculous. There are thousands and thousands of hikers on the trail. The, the trail can't take it, you know. Um, when you think of thousands and thousands of hikers, you all have to poop out there, you know. And um, you're supposed to drip, dig a cat hole and poop and cover it up, you know, off the trail and stuff. Um, but a lot of times it doesn't happen. Um, so there's a lot of damage being done on a lot of the big trails. And one of the reasons is Bill Bryson's book. Um, I don't know if you read Walk in the Woods, at all. Um, I read that book. I didn't know anything about Bryson. I didn't know he wrote comedy. So I read that book and I was like really pissed off. They're littering on the trail and everything. And uh, then my roommate, Leo, my partner in hiking mental health says to me, you know that was a, that's a joke, right? It's a comedy, right? I went, well, I don't think it's funny at all, you know. <laughs> um, and then we, when I saw it, I was in Hiawassee um, in 2015 when the movie came out. And <coughs> you see Nick Melty come and pick up his pack like this and throw it over the shoulder like this and start walking and you're like, oh yeah, that's newspaper, that baby. You know? <laughs> what, one of the ways you pick up your pack, put it on that's easy, is up like this, over, and like that. Mm -hmm. And I just learned this like three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's probably the easiest way. Um, if you can like Hype for Mental Health on Facebook, if anybody didn't get a bit, again, oh, and real quick, I have like some giveaways to give away. So let's do that real quick. How many pairs of socks do you pack? I have probably about 10 or 12. That you carry with you? Oh, no, I only carry two pairs of socks. Two. One for walking in, one for um, sleeping in. Yeah, and the reason I'm dressed like this today, is these are my, fam my um, famous pink pants. They were purple when I started the trail. Um, and after 10 weeks, they're pink. And so, so I'm going to do this real quick here. And once a week, you're going to go in and take a shower at a motel or something like that. Um, the stink, if you've ever smelled a through hiker, the stink is so far above body odor. I mean, it really is. In fact, the first thing I've given away, these are two of the best books I've ever read on the Appalachian Trail. And they, they're written by Susan and Lucy Letcher. Um, I'm good friends with Susan. I've hiked with her many times. Um, they're so good that when I read these books, when they were flirting with guys, I was jealous. <laughs> I you really honestly feel you're hiking with them. And they did the trail from, um, from Maine to Georgia and turned around and um, came back and did the trail twice, barefoot. 
Uh, Are those the books you donated? Yes, to the library? these okay. books okay. are also donated here. They're actually out right now. I just donated them last week, and they have them out. So if you don't win them, um, you really should check them out. When I first got this book, I read it. As soon as I was done, I read this one, Walking Home. Then I went back and read this one again immediately. <laughs> I went back and read, I spent a month reading these books twice. Wow. Um, they're just the best books. And the lucky winner of these is number 17. That's it. There you go. Wow. Yay. wow. All right. Wow. There you go. Thank you. All right. Now, talking about camp chairs, Becky, uh, who makes poles, donated this to Hike for Mental Health. The only problem is, I don't know, Hike really well who would carry this. Um, they sit down, brother. But they're, um, they're really good chairs, and they have a case, and let's see what the winner of the chair is. Number 21. Oh. <laughs> 21. <laughs> 21. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Thank you so much. You're What's welcome. the brand of those? I don't know. Like, like, oh, yeah. 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 Here is a book about the Florida Trail. It's outdated, okay? Um, but it was donated for free. It's outdated, but you can still read about it and see beautiful pictures that are still current. And the lucky winner of this is number seven, lucky seven. <laughs> and this is um, a book by a guy I know, and I mentored him before he did the trail himself. Um, his name is Zach Davis, and um, it's the only book I've ever read that mentally prepares you how to hike the trail. So it's a very unique book and a very popular book. The lucky winner of this is 23. Hey. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and I was hoping there were going to be some kids here. Um, but this is an Appalachian Trail game. And it's actually pretty fun. I have the big version of it. This is the smaller version that they give out at the hostels. It's kind of fun. And the winner of this is number 10. And I have an Appalachian Trail hat. <laughs> so, 24. There you go. <laughs> And then, this is my copy of the Florida Trail book. I'm going to give that away too because I forgot another book that I was going to bring. So, we'll do this one here. And this is number 11. There you go. Wow. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, good deal. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. If you could like, 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 and if you want to like me personally on Facebook, then you'll see all my posts about being on the trail and stuff. And it's like a headshot and I'm looking off to this way. I usually come up pretty quick on Facebook if you uh, want to like me. But please like, I can make a help, and please go to the Pearland. Um, that's all they want. So, uh, so it seems like there was a movie out called Live or about someone hiking the Pacific Coast Trail. I'm trying to remember that because I should remember that. Well, yeah, that, that was a, a book. Um, Yes, and once that book came out, and once the Bill Bryson book came out, all of a sudden now the whole, everybody needed to hike the Appalachian Trail and the Pacific Coast Trail. Yeah. And that's why the trails are so, so stressed out right now. Debbie's, I always say I could do the whole trail on little Debbie's. Um, uh, uh, cashews, I'll use. Um, you know what's really good for energy, believe it or not, is um, uh, jelly beans. Jelly beans are really nice too. A little heavy, but they're, they're nice. So any kind of snacks like that, um, cheese, a hard cheese will hold up better. So just a hard cheese and just cut that up. Um, I just, uh, when I did the Florida Trail, I had all this food with me and I cooked three times. So the only reason I cooked 
was because I wanted to just get rid of some of the weight, you know. Yeah, yeah. Every day I'd get there, I was just tired. And then the reason I stopped using um, camp shoes was my Crocs fell off somewhere. And so I didn't have them. And I'm like, well, I don't really need them because what I'm doing is just setting up my tech and go to bed. And so that's when I gave that up also. But it's very amazing how little you carry, you know. In Big Ben, you need to take a gallon of water a day, yeah, yes. just about, and it was very, very heavy. I only did that my wife love one week. Water is the heaviest thing you carry. But yeah. is there any? There's just none to it's a very filter dry, Big Ben. Dry is there any way you could cut down water? <coughs> yeah. Out of the only way is to get dehydrated water, and then you just add water. To it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we like I, 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 Borrego Desert, um, just 40 miles, but we had a stash of water there, and then you get there, and everybody's oh, got a gallon somebody of stashes water it for you. Yeah, and then you tie it to your pack and you pack it, and pack it out. Um, yeah. Um, what do you think about the, those carbon light poles that was compared to your traditional high uh, Um you know, you don't need to spend all that money on them, I don't think. Well, they're so light. Yeah, they are, they are light. I honestly don't know how well they hold up. But if they're carbon, they should hold up pretty good, I think, you know. What kind of what? Knife? Yes. Well, that's another funny story. I had a doing a shake down for this guy, and he's got a machete. And then he's got a steak knife. He's got another knife about that big. I said, okay, what is the machete for? Because in case they have to book whack, bushwhack. Now, this is a national park. Right? <laughs> you better not be bushwhacking on the Appalachian Trail. So this needs to go home. Yeah. And then he's got a steak knife like you have in your drawer. I was like, what's that for? He's for eating. And it's like, you don't need that either. And then he's got this other knife, um, you know, one of the... Um, a Swiss Army knife, you know, but has yeah. like a million different things on it. Yeah. Because, well, I have this, this is my utility knife that I can do anything I want with. I said, you don't need that. And he goes, well, what do you use? I pull out my knife, which is this big, and I open it up, and it's this big. I'm like that. He goes, what do you use that for? I said, everything. <laughs> you know, I cut my food with it. I, it's all you need. You need one knife, you know. Um, so I just use a very small little knife, you know, uh, which I usually wind up losing and have to go buy another one in town. Now the other thing too is bear bagging. Um, whether you're on the Florida Trail or the Appalachian Trail or the Pacific Crest Trail, you need to bear bag, especially in Shenandoah um, and especially in New Jersey. There's a lot of bears. Most times you're going to see a bear on the Appalachian Trail. It's going to be in New Jersey. And I had a baby cub come running right up to me on the trail. I looked at it. It looked at me. I first thought it was a dog. And we're both saying in our own language to ourselves, oh shit, you know. <laughs> and he turned and ran away and I was like, Hi, Mom. Nice, nice little cub you got there. Walked him by. You know. <laughs> um, so you definitely want to bear bag. Um, get your food off the ground. And when you bear bag, it's not just your food. It's your toothpaste. It's everything. You know. Um, even when I have my Gatorade bottles in the tent, they're empty Gatorade bottles. You know, they're just really used for peeing and so I don't have to get out of the tent. You know, at night. What's the weirdest thing you've taken out someone's pack? Um, the weirdest thing I've taken out of some about um, when was this kid comes in to the to top of Georgia, this was 2015, with a 85 pound pack on. A 19 year old kid, nice kid, right? 85 year old, uh, 85 pound pack. As an 85 pounds, he was, it was 100 when I started, I lost 15 at a shakedown in Mountain Crossings. I'm like, you lost just 15? And he had this huge thing hanging up like this out of his pack in a case. I was like, what is that? And he's like, my bow and arrow. I was like, what do you have a bow and arrow for? He goes, protection. I'm like, who the hell are you, Katniss Everdeen? You know, what are you going to stand fast, bad guy, while I pull out my pack? So that was one of them. Another one was uh, Sawyer makes a um, gravity drip filter thing that you wouldn't use on a through hike. You would use it like if you're like, weekend hiking and you need to filter water, you hang it in a tree. And this guy had all of this stuff. All of these hoses, 15 feet of hoses and everything. And he's like, well, I said, Sawyer is a really good one. Who sold you this? And he's like, well, the guy in REI. I said, well, the guy in REI didn't know what he was talking about. And he goes, 
okay, what do you use? And I show him my bladder with the Sawyer cut in and inserted in. He goes, can you do that for me? And this is the guy with the three knives. I said, yeah, let me have one of your three knives. And, I'll do it right now. <laughs> um, and then another guy had uh, 50 feet of clothesline for his bear bagging. 50 feet of clothesline, you know. This is tall bears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I use very, very thin line for my bear bag, you know. Um, but the bag I actually attach it to to throw the rock up over the tree is made of carbon fiber, like my garbage bag pack over there. You know. Yeah, I had several people tell me they ran across moose when they were up on the Appalachian Trail. Did you? Yeah, the one I had a cub with her, and she, they said they didn't know where they had, they made a big circle around where she was. <laughs> yeah, yeah so Jersey, you see them all the time. You know. But it's about ten after, and I was told like it stated ten after or quarter after, so. Anybody have another question? Yeah, um, do you have like a um, the program that uh, shows, do you have any program that says where, when exactly the dates where you're going? Yes, if you go, just Google hike for mental health mm -hmm. and our website comes up and then you see a thing that will say join a hike and you can click on that and see where our hikes are. Oh, Unfortunately, sorry. we don't have a lot of hikes around here. Yeah. Um, you know. But we have them in California, we have them in New York, we have them in Pennsylvania, um, so we have them pretty much all over. Do you know when, the, like in October, uh, where you... Uh, in October, we really do, um, although I think she's not doing it in October this year, but there's a really nice hike um, in New Jersey um, where you hike up to um, uh, Sunfish Pond, which is a beautiful, beautiful hike. Um, whoever has those books, you have those books, You'll read a, just a beautiful um, three, four pages when they get to Sunfish Pond and they describe it. It's like amazing, you know. So that's on the AT? What's that? So that's on the AT? Yeah, that's on the AT. Yeah. Have you ever been outside like of the United States or have you? From where? Well, out of the United States? Mm -hmm. um, no, I haven't. A little bit in Canada, but not, not mm -hmm. much to even say. It was really hard to, mm -hmm. you know. So I don't think I'll do another ultra long hike. Go ahead. Just want to make sure that you've been to uh, <coughs> Brazos Bend State Park in Texas. About forty-five minutes. Yeah, yeah. that's. I have not been there yet. You want to see gators? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, guys. Thank you all for coming. Oh, yeah. I really you. thought yeah. 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 Yeah